Hey, what's up? Uh, so I've been cooking. I've been making stuff. Uh, as some of you may know, like on the channel, I've been posting those like Akira inspired animations, renders, whatever you want to call them, recreations, whatever. Uh, but I've been having a lot of fun with those and they have forced me to use Eevee over Cycles. And I know Cycles is good. I love using Cycles normally, but for animations, it's just like, it's too much. It's, it's, it's really hard to get good animations with Cycles that are like super, you know, high res and clean. And I mean, in general, I mean, I still do use Cycles if I can. I, I've just been having more fun with Eevee. And one of the things that I've been messing around with is getting this very specific vintage anime look. The idea is that it creates this like very overexposed bloom, you know, especially when, when the background is pitch black and it's just like a focus on the character. So let me let me pull up a couple of examples. Evan Galleon probably has like the best in, in, in my recent memory, that, that's the first thing that comes to my mind, especially like the ending of, of that, the, the original show. Like there's a lot of these shots where the characters are isolated and there's a really big, strong light on them. And there's this bloom that's just blowing out the whole entire shot. And you kind of see this effect over and over, especially I, I just remember it a lot in uh, like Ghost in the Shell, in Neon Genesis. So it's normally like if you're not, if you're not familiar with this effect, and you see it done in Blender, for example, you might not really know like what's going on or what it is, but it, I feel like it, it hits like a certain part in the back of your head where you're like, that looks like anime and I don't know why. And I think it's because of this. Let's try to recreate that a little bit and to kind of get ahead of ourselves, uh, let's have fun with it, right? This is something I'm really, really excited to use and make stuff with, um, but I just, I, I just want to use it as an example for this video because I, I just got it and I'm excited. Anyway. There's this really cool shot that I found online. Let's let's like recreate that this shot right here since we have the model and we'll I'll just kind of talk through the effect and how to achieve it at the same time. So, let's 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 get into it. All right. First things first is you're going to want some kind of area light, something dramatic. So, let's just uh bring in a camera. This is a pretty high poly model. So, hopefully it doesn't give us too much trouble. Let's crank up the camera um focal length. Go into the camera settings. Make it like 180 something crazy yeah uh th for the akira scenes of the cities i've been doing like 180 200 uh and i saw i think that's a good amount this is this is cool already we're gonna go into rendered view for ev because this is ev not cycles like i think we'll be safe as well and i have some of the like emissive pieces turned on so cool now let's go into the world settings turn the just turn turn it all the way off uh, this looks so good. The texture work is so good. I'm going to leave a link to my buddy's website in case you want to look at some of his work. He's he's an amazing artist, amazing 3D modeler. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how this model turned out. So you can see the lighting is already kind of the same. There's this really dramatic lighting on one side and just almost pitch black on the other. And there's a little bit of light coming from like the eye and stuff. So the big thing with getting this effect is it's all in the bloom and in the intensity of the light. So the light right now by default is 10. We make it 100. You can see it's a little bit bigger. Let me, let me jump out of it. Ooh, I love that angle. Sorry, I try not to get distracted. Let's make it a little bit smaller so it's a little bit more um, sharper, if that makes sense. And bring, bring it up a little bit. And then bring it, I might turn off screen space reflections because I don't want like the green to be, but I also don't mind it. Okay, so there's that. I think maybe let's turn it down a bit, 80 or something like that. Okay, and then also we have eyeballs. The eyes, we gotta make them glow. Let's make that 10. Yeah. And even if I turn off the area light, you can kind of see the effect starting to happen here. So it's what it's doing is it's really blowing out, just like blowing out the, the lights, the highlights, and it's spreading all over the place and it's going all over the shot. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the camera settings and adjust the passport toe so that we just kind of take out everything outside the camera frame. All right, now that looks cool. I am, damn, I'm digging that. Let me make a, like a, like a tall format version. Yeah, and that looks like nice and mysterious. Dude, that looks so sick. Oh my God. Ah. All right, sorry. Let's be, let's get serious here. <laughs> let's get professional. Oof, it's a little bit too bright. Make it 50. The idea is that you just don't want the light to be like bouncing around too much. It's very dramatic. 
So I might have to turn off screen space reflections. Maybe bring it up. Yeah, I think bringing it up helps. Makes it a little bit more dramatic. Let's make the size smaller. So the smaller we make it, the more sharper these shadows. Like if you look at the bottom here, this shadow right here, this edge, if it's one, it's very soft. If it's 0 0.1, it's a lot more sharp. And that's what we want. We want it to be sharper. But you, you can kind of get, you kind of are getting the idea of the effect and how it works. The, the bulk of it is getting a really bright source light, making the emissive parts really bright, and then having the bloom turned on. And now kind of like, here's where a little bit of like magic happens. So if we have just leave the bloom settings by default, they're perfectly fine. But if we in, if we turn up the radius, it really kind of like you, it's hard to see. But if we turn all the way down, you can see that it stays just around the highlighted part, like the light, which is an effect that you could you could go for. You can get that effect, and I've seen that in anime as well. Or you can turn it all the way up, and it just blows out the whole entire screen. Turn up the knee as well. Turn the knee all the way up. It just adds more intensity to the bloom. And then the threshold is where the lower it goes the more like the bloom kind of spreads, if that makes sense. So you can see like if we turn it up, it's really like the shadows aren't really being affected by it and the colors are all kind of staying the same. If we turn it down, it starts to kind of get washed out. And some of these back areas even, yeah, like some of these back areas where the green is just barely there are starting to pop up. So if we turn the threshold up, it's not as noticeable. I think it's like detecting the pixels and stuff of the light and just amplifying the, the bloom. And you kind of almost get this like if we turn um if we go more into the shadowy side of the of it you can kind of see there's this extra bit right here at the top that wouldn't be there so it's an effect that i think uh the animes kind of tend to have where even like the medium tones the parts that are not totally light not totally shadow are also being like are given like a bloom effect so you can see here like like the the shadows and the hair also are kind of soft and, and glowing and things like that so i think turning down the threshold will get you that will get you this extra in between bloom and it also like just adds a soft color to everything so there's like a soft color in the mouth here that when the the, the threshold is turned up you don't really see that and it kind of comes back so i think that this kind of gets you the more traditional overexposed anime look with the threshold like on zero pretty much let me see if i can mess with the exposure mess with the gamma yeah and yeah, messing with this as well can kind of give you a different look depending on what you're going for wow so screen space reflections with the threshold all the way down just you can see they make a huge difference and if we kind of bring that back up it's a lot more subtle. So it really kind of depends on how intense you want the look to be. But this, I think, is the the, the secret and the, the, the sauce here is like the, the threshold and the intensity even, all that stuff. I mean, this looks weird, but it's a look. And if you kind of want that, I think it still has an interesting like art direction to it. So yeah, I don't know. Like hopefully that kind of gave you an idea of how to get that like dreamy, bloomy anime effect. But hopefully um, this was a good kind of explanation on at least where you can start from. And then obviously you can take it and do whatever you want with it. Experiment, build upon it, uh, add some anime shaders on top of it. See how that looks. That could look even better. But yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to. If you want to follow the whatever, everything else I got going on. Sorry about my dog. And uh, yeah, like, comment, all that kind of stuff. Thanks. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh, uh, hey, one last thing. If you add noise, it adds to like the vintage anime effect. So let me just show you quickly how to do that. So I have my render here. It's looking pretty good, pretty good. I'm excited, I'm stoked, I love it. So let's add a um, lens distortion. Drop that right in between and then just add a jitter. So adding the jitter will give it like this grain. And I think that, especially like, like here, you know, you can kind of see the effect it, it it adds, it works well, I think, with the glare, with the bloom as well, just does a little bit more. So yeah, just a quick little final tip. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye.